Hello, hello. Welcome to lesson 16. Today, we are going to continue to talk about objects and we are going to dive deeper into subclassing, which is also known as polymorphism. So in the previous lesson, we created an object to represent a square and we were able to add two functions, the area and the perimeter. And for your homework, you were supposed to create an object for a triangle. If you haven't done so yet, please do pause this video and try it out yourself. Cool, so to create a triangle, it's very straightforward. All we have to do is create a new class. So let's do class triangle colon and then hit enter. And then now we have to create the init function. So define underscore underscore init underscore underscore and the first parameter is self. And for a triangle, we need two parameters, a base and a height. And now we end it with a colon. And now inside the body of the function, let's set the properties. So self.base equals base, self.height equals height. Cool, and now let's create the functions for area and perimeter. So hit enter, enter, backspace, define area, and it takes in a self. And the area of a triangle is basically the base times height divided by two. So let's open the parentheses and then put self.base times self.height. And here we could just divide by two. And now let's do the perimeter. So for the perimeter, we just do define perimeter self and then colon. And here's the tricky part. A triangle actually has three sides and we can't just use the base and the height for this. So let's add three more parameters to the initializer of the triangle. So let's do a, b, c, and then just do self.a equals a, self.b equals b, and then self.c equals c. And then finally, we can just return self.a plus self.b plus self.c. And that should get us the perimeter of the triangle. Cool, so let's test this out. So let's create a triangle. So let's call it triangle equals triangle. And then here we pass it the parameters. So as you can see, we need a base. So let's give it a five height of 10 and let's give it 10 for A, 20 for B and 30 for C. And now let's print out the triangle. Let's hit run. And here, as you can see, we get a triangle mm -hmm. object. And now let's try printing out the area. So we call area and let's click run. And here we get 25, which looks right to me. 5 times 10 is 50, and 50 divided by 2 is basically 25. And now let's finally do the perimeter. So we replace this with perimeter. And now let's hit run. And here we get 60, which looks correct. 10 plus 20 plus 30 is 60. Cool. Now we have a square, and now we have a triangle. Cool. Now what if we want a rectangle? Following the pattern that we did earlier, we can just copy the square and then basically just change the name to a rectangle. And a rectangle basically has a base and a height. So we can just put base and height here. And let's rename this to dot base equals base and then self dot height equals height. And the area of a rectangle is just base times height. So let's change this to self dot base times uh, self dot height. And the perimeter of a rectangle is just self dot base times two plus self dot height times two because there are two sides with the same base and two sides with the same height. And if you look closely, all of them look pretty similar. They all have a function to calculate the area and the perimeter. And if you look here, a rectangle has a base and a height and a triangle also has a base and a height. And a square has a length, but technically a square does have a base and a height. So let's update the code for the square so that it has a base and a height. So for the init, let's make it take a base and then a height. And now let's update the properties. So now let's do self.base equals base. And then now let's do self.height equals height. And now for the area, now instead of self.length, we could either use the base or the height. So let's just use the base. And similarly for perimeter, we can also just use the base because the base and the height are the same lengths. So now all three objects all have a base and a height, and they all have a function to calculate the area and the perimeter. And one more thing we can do is we can update a square so that it matches a rectangle. For example, for the area, we can also just do self.base times self.height. And also for the perimeter, instead of doing self.base times four, we can just do self.base times two plus self.height times two. And now if you look really closely, the square and the rectangle are basically identical. And the only difference is that this one is called a square and this one is called a rectangle. Now if we take a step back, all three of these objects are basically shapes and they all have common properties. More specifically, they all have a base, a height, and we can also calculate the area and also the perimeter. So based on this information, we can clean up a lot of redundant code by subclassing these objects as a shape. 
This is also known as polymorphism and probably one of the harder computer science topics. The reason for this is because people tend to have trouble finding the relationships between different objects. But if you write out each property and each function, it becomes a simple game of matching the similarities and differences. So the benefit of subclassing is so that we can store these three shapes in a list. If you remember in lesson 10, I told you that you should only store one type inside a list. So if we don't subclass, we would only be able to store a list of squares, a list of rectangles, or a list of triangles. But now that we have subclassed these objects into a bigger umbrella of shapes, we can now store a list of shapes. The benefit here is that we know that for each shape, we can get the area, perimeter, base, and height. And because the square, rectangle, and the triangle all subclass the shape, we can just call the shape the parent class. Cool, so to subclass, all we need to do is create the parent class shape. So let's create a class called shape, and now let's define the init. And then the first parameter is self. And from what we notice, all three shapes have a base and a height. So let's add that, so base and a height. And now let's add the properties, so self.base equals base, and self.height equals height. And each shape has an area and a perimeter, so let's copy it from the square and paste it into line 6. Cool, so now we have a base and a height, and an area and a perimeter. Next, all we have to do is go to the classes that we want to subclass. So all we have to do is after the square, we add a parenthesis, and then we put a shape inside here. So this just means that the square subclasses the shape. And now we have to update the init function for the square. And since the init of the shape already sets the properties base and height, we can basically reuse this logic, and we don't need to do it for the square. To do this, we need to call the initializer from the parent class shape. So all we have to do is type super, open the parentheses, and then do dot underscore underscore init underscore underscore. And then we open the parentheses, and basically the super refers to the parent class shape. And when we click on this init, you see how it highlighted this init above? So basically it's calling the initializer on the parent class shape. And also this initializer takes in a base and a height, which matches the parent classes in it. So all we have to do here is just pass it the base and the height. So now we can remove these two lines below. And one extra thing is that for a square, the base and the height are the same. So basically we can remove the base and the height and just use a length. And then we just pass the length twice. So that way this length gets set for the base and also the height. And because the parent class has an area and perimeter function, we can get rid of that in the square. And now let's also do the same for the rectangle. So we can just do super and then dot underscore underscore in it underscore underscore and just pass it the base and the height. And now we can get rid of this base and the height. And now we can also get rid of the area and the perimeter. And finally, we can also do the same for the triangle. So let's copy the super in it. And now let's paste it for the triangle. And now we can get rid of the base and the height. So since A, B, and C is only custom to the triangle, we can just leave these properties here. And one cool thing about subclassing is that we can override functions. So in the case of the triangle, the area and the perimeter calculations are different compared to the square and the rectangle. So basically, by creating our own area and perimeter functions in the triangle, we can override the parent class's area and perimeter function. Cool, now look at this code. It's a lot more cleaner and there's less redundant code. And as you can see, we are reusing this area and perimeter function for both the square and the rectangle. Cool, so now let's create a list of shapes. So let's do list of shapes and let's make it equal square bracket. And now let's create a square. And notice how the square only takes in one length. So let's pass it a five. And now let's create a rectangle. And it takes a base and a height. So let's put five and two. And now let's create a triangle. And this one takes a base and a height, so let's put 5 and 10, and then A, B, C, let's put 10, 20, and 30. And now let's print out each shape inside our list. So we can just do for shape in list of shapes. Now we can do print shape. And now let's run our code. So now we get this error. Um, basically the error is just saying we forgot to subclass the rectangle and the triangle. So all we have to do is copy the shape and paste it for rectangle and also triangle. So that way they subclass it. Um, so now let's click run. And here, as you can see, we got a square, rectangle, and a triangle. And now we can also calculate the area and the perimeter. So we just do dot area, and then we can also do shape dot perimeter. And now let's click run. Um, okay, so we have another error saying square object has no attribute area. So if we look here, oh, okay, so it looks like I messed up my spacing. So spacing is very important. So let's just backspace these two lines. And as you can see, they all line up. So now let's click run again. Cool, so as you can see, we got the area and the perimeter for each shape. 
And for the triangle, I want you to notice that it used the custom area and perimeter functions that we created for the triangle class. Cool, so hopefully everything made sense. Just to summarize really quickly, we created a parent class shape with the properties base and height, and it also has the functions area and perimeter. And basically we have a square, rectangle, and a triangle, which all subclass the parent class shape. Uh, so that means we have access to the base, the height, the area, and the perimeter. So one thing to note is that the triangle has extra properties, the A, B, and C. And when we put all of the shapes in a list, we can access any of these properties or functions above. And the triangle can access the A, B, or C property. But for example, if the rectangle tries to access an A, our program will crash because a shape does not have an A property. So therefore, when you work with the list of objects, make sure to only use the properties in the parent class. Cool, so now let's bring this back to a real life example. So if you play video games like League of Legends, I'm pretty sure they use a lot of subclassing. So basically they will have a parent class called character and each character would have a name, an attack, and a defense. And then finally, there is also a basic attack. And basically for each unique character, we can create a class for each one. And basically each basic attack can be overridden based on the character. And next, I'm pretty sure you've probably seen a diagram like this before where basically animals have been classified into its own category. So since we are all humans, let's focus on the mammals category. As you can see here, there are five traits that determine whether an animal is a mammal. So for homework, feel free to create a parent class mammal and create three subclasses. The parent class should have a function called make sound, which basically prints out the sound that the animal makes and feel free to override this function for each mammal. And if you want, feel free to drop your code in the comments below and I'll try my best to review each one, but no promises. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something new. Make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.